Hi guys, Mike Lambeau here. I often get asked to uh, recommend which book people should buy or where they should start or, or what the, you know, asked what the differences are between books and so on uh, or between my games. So what I thought I'd do is record a, a fairly quick, concise video. I'm going to try not to ramble too much uh, and just run through all six of my first, uh, well, through the first six of my war games that I produced um, in book format. So here they are and uh, let's just crack on shall we and get through it. So um, if you're watching this I guess you might be interested to know you know the differences and so on so I'll try and highlight some as we go through. So the first one was Fields of Normandy. You can see straight away this is slightly smaller. Uh, that's mainly because I didn't realise I could make bigger books at that point so um, yeah first honest statement of the day. Uh, so this one then um, has 15 missions. Uh, it's fair to say that uh, the first Three, four, that's three, four, five missions. Only the first five, if not the first six, are fairly quick playing, uh, training missions, if you like. Chance to have a go, get used to the rules. You'll whiz through those fairly quickly. So um, first thing I'd say is, if you do start with this one, which is as good as any to start with, uh, please don't judge after two maps. You, know, you need to stick with it just a little bit. Once you get to mission six, and certainly beyond that, you can see straight away that the maps get bigger, uh, the rules get more complicated, there's a lot more to think about, and more tactics come into it, and so on and so forth. Okay, so these games are not um, what I would call roll and write games. They're not, you know, you don't sort of roll a dice and, and colour bits in. Um, but you do, they're more, certainly these Hex and Counter ones, which are most of them, they're, they're more akin to traditional Hex and Counter war games. Okay, so you can, you, know, you can move uh, units around the board. You can. There are no counters included in this one, for example. But you can just use something like wooden cubes or whatever you might have laying around at home um, to to move stuff around on there. People, the the war gaming community have produced counter sheets on Board Game Geek for you to find and have a go at if you if you want to have a use of those. Uh, some people do photocopy them and draw on them, but I find that's the minority of, of users. Some people cover them in you know place them into an acetate sort of thing and scribble on them and so on. But that, you know, the way you play them is up to you. But they're a bit different, I think, to some of the roll and write games out there. For a start, you know, every mission is different. So you're getting 15 different missions here. You know, they, you know there's lots of, you can replay them as well. Certainly all my games are what I, I call replayable. You know, a good few times for each map at least. So there's plenty of content here to keep you going, particularly for the price point. Um, you know, a lot of roll and write games are sort of single sheet games and you, you can just photocopy that, you know, or, or you'll get a book with that printed in 50 times or something and you're playing the same thing again and again. You're not doing that here in, in any of my books. They're all, you know, provide you with plenty of stuff to do. Okay, so this particular, so that's, a lot of those comments apply to all of them. Yeah? This particular book then, yes, yeah, so say you get 15 missions. This is obviously Normandy. It's World War, World War II. And what you're doing here is you are controlling small groups of units, small squads, uh, and, and moving your units around the board. So you, you generally start your units. Uh, let's just settle on one page randomly flicking through it and giving you a headache. So for example, here you're controlling rifle squads and machine gun teams. You start down the bottom here generally and you push your way up. There are, um, you roll dice to see what your what orders your units can, can do or actions they can perform. And then you have to you know, choose the best ones to fit the positioning of your units, where they are, what, what enemies are there, what, you know, what's been revealed and so on. The units move up. The, the, there are tactical considerations here. So it's not just a case of, oh, I've got a five, a push forward one or whatever. You, you know, you, you've got to decide where to move. So you, you can see there are, you know, there are hills, there are the woodlands, there are rivers and bridges, there are buildings. Uh, the artwork's been slightly updated since this first run, print run of this book, so it's slightly more attractive, not hugely, but slightly. Nice and straightforward. I have to keep it simple for people who do want to actually write on the hexes. But the idea is, you, you know, you, you move, you, you can you can move your units, advance them up the map, that's cool. You can fire, you can seek cover, you can scout enemies out, you can throw grenades. You know, there are lots of different things you can do. So there's lots of choices to be made. And I say, we'll play out differently every time. The enemies here appear on these question marks, and then you have to deal with them accordingly. Uh, facing is important in this game with the enemies, so the enemies will face in a certain direction when they are revealed. Um, and you can then flank, so flanking and also support from, from your fellow units is important. So lots of ta the, the kind of tactical considerations that you get in any hex and counter game, but 
really simple, really straightforward. Um, the rules are really nice and clear. Uh, you know, I, I, due to the professions that I've had over the years, I'm, you know, without sounding big headed, I'm particularly skilled at writing rules concisely and clearly, and I rarely get many rules questions. Uh, the odd one or two that have, have cropped up have been corrected, or not corrected, but clarified in the rules just to make sure that you know, everybody who buys a book now gets uh, a completely crystal clear set. There's a player aid there included as well. So that's the fields of Normandy. Okay, and it's a good starting point. Uh, you'll get lots of content out of that. Um, you know, some of these later missions probably take, you know, 20 to 40 minutes. Can't remember exactly what I said for that one, but and because you can replay them, and there are, as I say, certainly nine or ten quite meaty missions uh good as good a place to start as any okay then i brought out my second book was battles of normandy which i think with hindsight was probably slightly confusing i think a lot of people felt that this was a sequel to fields of normandy it was more or less the same game but you know um i don't know maybe with different maps or whatever it's not yeah it's, it's an entirely different map uh, different game it's yes it's set in normandy but that's probably where the similarities uh, at least the major sim similarities end again you've got you know the rules set out first of all uh this one has eight maps in it like I say, so eight um missions as you might call them rather than the 15 from fields but it, but this one gets straight into it so right from the beginning these are big tough maps so you've got eight of those and again they're they're highly replayable um so again the rules are there nice and clear for you again there are there is terrain uh woodlands and buildings and so on there are enemies. This time the enemy does move around the map, unlike in Fields of Normandy. So the Fields of Normandy, the enemies are actually static, but don't let that put you off that one. It still gives you a good challenge. But this one is slightly more advanced, I think. So it's a good one to do after Fields, uh, unless you're, you're an experienced war gamer. Not, it's not complex. It won't take you long. Uh, again, setup time is minimal. Uh, play time is probably a little bit longer. These Some of these could perhaps take up to the best part of an hour to play. Um, you can see straight away the hexes are smaller, so therefore the maps are bigger in scale. Uh, but, but still similar, you've still got a turn tracker like we did in Fields of Normandy. You still roll dice to see what your units can do. We're still dealing with here with rifle squads, machine gun teams, you know, Piat teams, sniper teams, those sorts of, that sort of scale. And the Germans, again, you know, they have uh, rifle squads, machine gun teams, um, and half tracks. In this one you see th th these are based on real battles so fields uh, was just were just sort of generic things uh, these are these are, sorry i shouldn't say real battles well i guess they are they're, but they're based on you know real events the, the, the sort of the, the progression that the um, allied forces took through normandy uh, in the area of Cairn. so they you know there were canals bridges to take river bridges to take uh, and various other bits and pieces various villages and towns that we're taking um so yeah challenging um can be very challenging the, the, the thing about this game is the ai sets up randomly every time uh, with random units in random positions uh, as do the the allied forces so you do get a very different game every time you play that so um eminently replayable um that's battles of normandy ghost of the jungle uh, was my third um one in the series and I moved away slightly here for well, I moved away from World War II obviously to Vietnam uh, and this one is different in that well let me show you a map first of all because the maps here are square based or tiles as I call them in the game rather than hexes um, and this is actually a stealth game so here you're controlling just four troopers from the SAS from the Australian SAS in Vietnam and you're conducting various missions in this book there are 12 missions okay uh, and they include things like reconnaissance and uh, eliminating commanders. Um, what else we got? Rescuing people from the jungle, uh, destroying ammo, ammo dumps, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we have, um, so you control your four guys. Usually, you start at the bottom here. You have objectives to achieve. You have to move around the map very carefully. Um, shooting the enemy is generally your, your sort of last resort because that has uh, adverse implications. Again, you're rolling dice to see what you can do. So you know, the one similarity between these three books is this kind of restricted order system where you roll the dice and the dice determine what actions are available for your particular unit that you're rolling for that time. And then you decide 
depending on the position, the circumstances, which of those actions you want to do, if any, or you can do them all or, or whatever. Um, so this time you're moving, you're hiding, you are shooting, throwing grenades, uh, you are tending to colleagues who are, you know, you know, to comrades or, or, or you know, fellow soldiers, if you like, fellow troopers who are injured, uh, and you're conducting hand-to-hand -hand combat, which is, which is good, it's nice and quiet, nice and stealthy, this is that kind of game. There's no turn tracker here, you'll see, so it's a sort of game where you can take your time within reason, because every turn, uh, every every turn, you know, run of turns, there is a... There is a um, events that can happen so you've got to watch out for snipers and enemy trucks coming past and reinforcements and things so you can take your time but not not too long otherwise things sort of you know ramp up in difficulty so different sort of game um generally well received again so uh, people enjoying that one i think plenty of replayability fourth one then was battles of medieval britain and this has been um I think it's my best seller, probably, along with uh, Fields of Normandy, the first one. I think that's because it deals with a time period that perhaps not so many games deal with. Um, and again, this one's got 12 battles in it. Yeah, again, it kicks off you know, in full swing, so there's, there's no real sort of training mission as such, although it's slightly more, because it's such an old battle, this one, 937, the year 937, um, it was sort of warriors against warriors, so nothing too fancy. But the, the types of units, I guess, get a bit more complex as you go through. Not a lot, but a bit. Um, but apart from that, you know, each battle is has its own challenges, its own tactics required. And again, they're real battles. Uh, and this contains the, you know, lots of the classic battles from the time so you've got for example Fulford Gate, Battle of Stamford Bridge, Battle of Hastings, Battle of the Standard, uh, Battle of Stirling Bridge, Battle of Falkirk, Ban uh, Bannockburn, Battle of Shrewsbury so you know, plenty of well-known battles from British history here. Again it's a similar sort of restricted order system but the rules are different again the rules are different this one also has random setup but again this one the units don't move um, but reinforcements do appear, which kind of gives the effect of the units moving around. It's quite, um, even though I say it myself, quite a clever system, really. Uh, again, you've got a turn, you're a restricted turn tracker here, and you see on there reinforcements appear at certain times. So here you've got, you know, generally you're controlling um, groups of warriors, infantry, archers, horsemen, spearmen, those, you know, those kinds of units. So some ranged, some not ranged, um, which was something new for me. Uh, in my games and a different challenge but yeah that's again you know been well received rules again nice and clear there's some diagrams in here nice bit of color you know as, as my books go along they get um, I think more colorful it's fair to say the graphics get slightly better fifth one was beaches for the brave uh, this is about the d-day landings both in uh, Normandy but also uh, in other parts of the world like the Pacific um, different yeah this is different I moved away from the standard um, restricted order system. So this game, how many rules really? Rules is quite, yeah, rules are any sort of six, seven pages long. That's a full example of play for you there. This game is is what I would call a dice allocation game. Okay, so generally you start with your units down here in the sea, and you've got to get to the top of the beach and destroy, or you've got to move up the beach, say, and destroy. In that case, the bunker. In this case, the bunkers. And in, in I think one or two cases, uh, an enemy tank and a bunker and so on. Okay. Um, so what you do here is you you roll the number of dice that you have um, equal to the number of units you have, and then you have to allocate you have to allocate a dice to each unit and do whatever that dice then tells you to do with that unit. So you've got to be a bit clever about where you're allocating them. There are other things you can do with those dice. See over here, there's naval support. Um, Allied fire, grenade attacks, suppressing fire, reinforcements, uh, office, the officer, you know, if you've got an officer present, you roll the right sort of dice, you can re-roll some of those, and even allied tank support in, on some beaches. So there are lots of, you know, a lot of decisions to make. Um, and I th you know, but this is a really quick playing game. You can play this in 10 minutes. This is almost like, it's like the candy crush of my series in a way. I find it really addictive. You, know, you play it, um, quite often you lose because it's quite difficult and you want to play straight away just to, you know, to show you, you can do it, you do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again. So quick playing, but again, you know, almost infinitely replayable. I mean, every game has, it, has its life, doesn't it? But again, for the price, for the price, you're going to get a lot of uh, value, I think, out of that. 
and hopefully a lot of enjoyment. So it's certainly one I still, it's probably still the one I play the most, just because I can play it in 10 minutes. It's great to play, you know, when you have a coffee or just take your mind off things or, you know, before you start work or, or whatever, you know, when you're traveling, just dead easy, dead easy. Few dice, few counters, away you go. You know, that's Beaches for the Brave. There are, again, I think there are 12 beaches here. So table of contents in all my books. Yeah, 12 beaches here. So you've got Utah, Utah twice. You've got Gold Beach, uh, Iojima in the Pacific. You've got Juno, uh, Tarawa in the Pacific. You've got Sword Beach, Oma Omaha Beach twice. Uh, Point du Hoc, you know, the cliff. Yeah, uh, You've got uh, Gavutu Islet, which is near uh, Guadalcanal. Or was near, yeah. And you've got uh, Tarawa again in, on a different beach. So lots of different options. Some of them easier than others. Um, but again, you're straight into the action, straight into the sort of full missions with that one. Not a lot of training other than reading the rules and then learning as you go. But again, really straightforward. And the latest book is uh, Race to Bastogne, uh, which is set in the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, and it's basically about tanks rushing to Bastogne to um, provide support to the US 101st Airborne. I'm, I'm reluctant to say rescue them. Yes, they were in Bastogne, yes, they were surrounded, but um, they rightly insist that they didn't need rescuing, but no doubt the support was welcome. So the tank, uh, you're con generally controlling armor here. So you know, Shermans, you're controlling priests, mobile infantry and Greyhound um, armored cars and so on. So that's sort of what you're doing. Uh, again, this you know, rule's nice and clear. Uh, this one's got 12 missions again and, and again whilst the first one is called cool training it, it's not like it's a really quick playing short thing again again here you can see you know lots of color lots of diagrams again I think you'll, you'll agree the, the graphics are improving in my books as they go along you've got really nice color illustrations a nice player aid there and you can see here that the maps now have you know more realistic looking vegetation and buildings and so on a nice sort of snow effect on the ground um for the, to reflect the freezing conditions that were there uh, again this is back to my more traditional sort of rolling for each unit and then doing whatever the dice say you can do well there's quite a lot more choice on this one you know, most dice give you more than one order that you can perform so you've got that to think about as well as then mapping that onto the you know what the units are doing and so on and where the enemies are again the enemies appear where the question marks are so there's there's elements of the fields of normandy here in some respects um but there's elements of other games as well other my, you know, my other games as well there's, there's you know, sort of mishmash of, of different ones but again been very well received generally uh sets sets on the sort of real route to Bastogne that was taken, so there are some, you know, some geographical locations that ring true and so on. Uh, and this takes you right the way through. The objective of the missions is generally to clear them. In others, it's to sort of park your Shermans in various hexes and so on. Um, you see there, the maps do get slightly bigger, so, you know, filling the page more. So nice large spaces for your units. So what I did with this one for the first time was in, with include some suggested counters, so you can, being the last page. Of the book it's nice and easy to, to take that out and cut that neatly out there stick that to card let it dry completely then cut it up with a good quality craft knife or pair of scissors um, and you've got a nice set of counters there to use in your game so you, you know apart from the dice you're basically getting a you know a full hex and counter game there with 12 missions that are you know replayable certainly to, to some degree if you're sure you'll want to play each one a, a good few times at least till you win it uh, and again, you know, games are probably taking 20 to 40 minutes again. So, you know, you're going to get a, at least 10 to 20 hours of enjoyment out of this book. Uh, you know, for the again, for the price point. Um, yeah, pretty good value, I would say. Yeah, that's a brief overview of my six books. They're all available on Amazon. Word of warning, just make sure you go to your local Amazon site. You know, so you know, make sure you're going to .com if you're in the US or some other places. Make sure you're in you know, .de in Germany or .uk in, U in the UK uh, and so on. You know, so, so do do that, please, because then you'll get the best price and the best delivery cost. You know, if you're a member of Prime or anything like that, you should be able to get these free. Um, free delivery, I should say. Yeah. Thanks very much. Cheers, guys.